Hello, detectives. I'm Sala. Welcome to episode two of the devlog of Keyword a Spider Threat. Today, this one is going to be a bit off topic. The trailer for Black Myth Wukong was released not long ago. Since then, it's been all over my socials, attracting the attention of everyone from my colleagues to Triple A Studio. Today, we are gonna look at it from a game developer's point of view. What made it so good, and how can we do the same? As soon as the trailer started, the voiceovers caught my attention immediately. Good voice acting and music can pull the players right into the experience. Looking at these stunning assets, I can't even imagine how much money and time modelers poured into these models. Take a simple example: the table lamp next to me at the opening of episode one cost a hundred U.S. dollars to model. Now look at this bridge again. Notice all the details. Our guess is this massive model was likely first 3D scanned and then touched up by artists later. This would be more manageable than modeling a huge asset like this piece by piece. The game's LED system was very well done. The model in each scene transitioned smoothly from long range to close up. It's rare that all in-game models are rendered at once at the highest level of quality. Usually. Only a rough model is rendered at long distance, and replaced by progressively more detailed models as the player zooms in. This process requires artists to create assets with different levels of detail for different distances. If this isn't done well, the player sees a very abrupt transition in level of detail as the distance changes. Do you notice when the transition happens in this real-time in-game display? If not, That means we are doing a great job. The city models in Keyword A Spider's Thread actually use custom LOD technology to let players zoom in into any room across the city. The new Nanet function in Unreal Engine 5 automatically optimizes the use of ultra high precision models directly. Nanet automatically generates multiple level of detail and makes the transition between them look natural. Now. No matter how complex and numerous the models in the scene may be, it maintains a stable quality from far to near. For what I see, the team at Wukong probably uses Nanite to make its LED system look completely seamless. Another highlight for us was seeing Wukong transform from a statue into a living, breathing character in a flurry of particles. This technique is not particularly difficult. But seeing how natural it can look surprised us. This effect uses GPU-driven particles. Simply put, it cuts the original model into many small particles and then uses the GPU to simulate a virtual wind, which pushes all the particles in the direction of the wind and eventually reform in shape of Wukong. The popularity of GPUs and optimization of game engines. Have allowed this technology to be used in more and more games. In the early days of game dev, games couldn't do the massive amount of calculations needed when there were no GPUs. Thanks to technology, such experiences are now possible. Another part of the trailer that stood out was the effect of walking on snow. We think the team used a height field to create the effect of displacements. Imagine a texture representing the height of the snow. When Ukon's feet interact with the snow, the texture's value is procedurally modified. The snow's geometry then moves up or down according to the height field. The snow geometry is likely also broken down into smaller triangles using GPU subdivision later. The detailed geometry displacement and particles generated as characters walk make the snowy ground look so realistic. Wukong's fight scenes were also impressive. When I first saw them, I assumed the studio must have used advanced motion capture technology. Maybe they even had a martial artist performing the fight scenes. However, our tech lead said that many of the animations might be done by hand using manual adjustments. This was because the monsters were all unique shapes. This made doing the rigging and bones very complex. 
Something that surprised me was that even though Wukong jumps, spins, and flips almost non-stop, my motion sickness was minimal. I think this was achieved partially by using a well-tested field of view, or maybe by using the third-person camera angle strategically. In other words, Wukong is fixed at the center of the scene as a reference object, which prevents motion sickness. Here is a detail that not many people would notice. The use of light is so natural that players forget it's there. Global illumination is, in simple terms, diffuse reflections. Lighting in games is actually pretty straightforward. The places where there is no direct lights are usually dark, but in Wukong, the snowy grounds in the shadows is tinted blue by the blue sky. The sunlit snow illuminates the greenstone walls too. This is the result of global illumination. For example, in this scene, the light should be reflected from here to here, then reflected here, creating a shadow without a total blackness. This probably used Lumen, UE5's new global illumination system. Lumen also relies heavily on the GPU, so if AAA games didn't have a GPU to play with, you would lose so much in-game detail. The English translation here might not grab everyone's attention, but it must have taken a lot of thought. The translations are written in Elizabethan or Shakespearean English. In Keyword and Spiders thread, we also use lines related to ancient texts and religions. When we were looking for writers to polish our English test, very few writers could use Shakespearean English. Some even needed help from literature professors. It must have taken some effort to translate these archaic terms and usages. I believe that if a team took the time to translate subtitles into older form of English, the entire production team must have considered every game detail carefully. This game is definitely a genuine work of art. Great job to the Wukong team. We can't wait for the whole game. Finally, I would like to say that the development details we discussed today are just our educated guesses. The programmers at City From Not are all gamers who just love technology. Please forgive us if we were wrong. Everyone is welcome to give their opinions in the comments below. If you think your game dev knowledge has increased because of this video, please give a thumb up and subscribe to our channel. One more thing, we have officially released the keyword of spider's thread on Steam. If you want to experience the dev techniques I mentioned in the video, including the unique LOD system custom made for keyword a spider thread, come and play, links are below. Your support for the indie game means a lot to us. Thanks in advance, I'm Sala, and I will see you next time.